What's up guys, it's me, Kidar, and in this video I'll be taking a look at the history of dice. Dice are a very common thing used in many board games, and honestly you can't have enough of them. So without further ado, let's jump into the history of this ancient invention. So dice are practically used in every board game. They're a great tool for randomization and are much better than the two-sided sticks used in Senate. Those things were just weird. I guess flipping a coin wasn't invented yet. But dice were used before people cared enough to record history, and we honestly don't know exactly when dice were invented. But dice are unique in the way that they were conceived. Unlike things like Senate and chess, which originated from a single area and then spread worldwide, dice actually cropped up all across the world without really originating and spreading from one specific place. The earliest dice, even though they technically weren't dice, were just objects that looked throwable, like pebbles or seashells. Now, thank God for innovation, because I don't want to play D&D and just throw various safety hazards to play the game. But soon, people figured out that not just anything can be used as dice, and made dice-like things called knuckle bones or ostrogali from the bones of animals. But to be fair, those deformed monstrosities would not make good dice. But here's the thing. Dice were initially not used for gaming. Dice were actually first used to tell fortunes and to divine futures. Occasionally, dice were used as a decision-making tool as well, similar to flipping a coin. But due to more and more people using bones and old dice to make decisions, dice made their way into the hands of common people instead of being exclusive to fortune tellers. About 7,000 years ago, people realized, hey, you know, it would be easier if we threw things that were more you know, shaped nicely instead of misshapen monstrosities. And through this streak of intellect, those animal bones that were used as dice, like knuckle bones and ostrogali, started being carved to roll and look more natural. Now, dice first made its way into board games technically with the first board game ever made, Senate. Senate is pretty much a predecessor to games like Trouble, so it's completely understandable that a randomizer was in the game. Instead of your standard six-sided die, Senate used sticks with one side curved and the other side flat. So basically it was like flipping a coin. The first actual dice were used in the Royal Game of Ur, which was made in 3000 BCE. The Royal Game of Ur used the dice equivalent of stepping on Legos, four-sided dice, or D4s. I swear to god, if Kevin McAllister played D&D, he would have had so many D4s. The Royal Game of Ur is a direct ancestor to Backgammon, so it's understandable that the game uses dice. Our beloved six-sided dice came up in Mesopotamia in 1300 BCE and used pips instead of numbers as this was centuries before the invention of Arabic numerals and the modern symbols for numbers. Even though dice were starting to get used in games, in ancient times they were the perfect tools for gambling and so many gambling games resulted from dice. Dice were huge in India, China, and Greece, but Rome was where things started getting big. Ironically, gambling was illegal in Rome, unless it was during the festival of Saturnalia. Roman leaders were also avid gamblers later on in the empire's history, with emperors like Mark Anthony, notorious cheater Caligula, Nero, and Commodus playing dice games. Commodus actually built a special room for rolling dice. The things rich people do. Well, Rome didn't last forever, and the Roman Empire eventually and obviously fell. But dice persevered. In the Middle Ages, dice were one of the few pastimes that peasants could afford. In Africa and the Americas, the natives used dice for recreational purposes, as this was becoming more popular around the world, but dice were also used as tools for divination in those areas as well. Dice was already pretty popular, but in the 11th century, dice exploded. Maybe literally due to poor manufacturing, but figuratively as well. Dice games went crazy with the introduction of a game called Hazard. Now that name's making me wonder if dice actually exploded while playing that game. But Hazard was a game played both by commoners and nobles alike. Hazard was so popular that dice schools and guilds were formed. Oh my god, there was dice Hogwarts. 
But Dice's popularity didn't stop the Catholic Church from making a huge stink about it, and like Bakemon in the same time, Dice games were banned. And like Rome, people just ignored the Catholic Church and played Dice anyway. When people figured out the world wasn't only restricted to Europe and Asia and discovered the Americas, Dice games were bound to make their way there. And the crew of the Mayflower enjoyed many gambling games to the disdain of the religious pilgrims. Hazard, the massively popular European game, made its way to America through the French. Hazard's origins in America are traced back to New Orleans, where it was called Crapaud, which means toad. Interesting choice of a name. Crapaud became a popular game for slaves, who shortened the name to Craps. Sound familiar? That's because Craps is now the most popular gambling dice game in the US. And with the invention of games like Monopoly in the early 20th century, dice became an ever so popular item in households. Dice are a perennial item in board games. They crop up everywhere and they've evolved from simple bones to a crazy number of polyhedra nowadays. Dice are obviously not going away anytime soon and it's fascinating to see the history of an ancient yet still present invention. And that was the history of dice in a nutshell. Please leave a like on this video and subscribe for more content, as well as comment any other facets of board game history you would like to know down below. If you're interested in supporting my channel further, please check out my trading card game, The Gladiator Trading Card Game. A link to its shop page will be in the description down below. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.